Hello everyone and welcome to the Practical English Brain. Past perfect progressive tense. Changing active sentences in past perfect continuous or progressive tense uh, to passive form. This is our topic today and I know it's a part of the advanced grammar so I hope you will enjoy watching this video. Let's start with Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. So look at the structure. When we use past perfect con continuous or progressive tense, we talk about the duration of an ongoing action before something else in the past. Don't forget this. It's important. So the structure. She, with all subjects, we use the helping verb had and then been. These two helping verbs. And main verb comes in ing form, then object, and rest of the sentence. She had been driving her car for an hour before arriving here. So the concept is that the action of driving was going on for a period of time, for an hour, before something else, before she arrived here. So that's the general concept, and this is the structure. When you want to change uh, this sentence to passive form, it's almost the same structure, but you only add, I mean, the auxiliary being before a main verb in third form. You change main verb from ing form to third form, and you add being, one more auxiliary. And obviously, the object of your active sentence becomes the subject of a passive sentence. The subject of your active sentence becomes the object of preposition here. So, her car had been being driven by her for an hour before arriving here. This is how you change uh, your sentences from active to passive form in past perfect continuous or progressive tense. It's pretty easy. You just need to pay a little bit of attention, okay? Uh, just a few points to be kept in mind. That's what I'm trying to say. The subject of your active sentence becomes object of preposition. See? In red color here, okay? And the object of your active sentence becomes the subject of a passive sentence. The same auxiliary is had been, had been, had been here, had been here. But one more auxiliary being is added in passive form and the next thing you change verb to a uh, past participle of third form that's all okay and now here we have a negative uh, sentence the same structure but only the word not is added uh, after had after the auxiliary verb had okay or in other words you can say i mean not the word not comes between these two auxiliaries had and been okay had not been so the subject here first and then auxiliary, then not, then been, then man verb in ing form, then object in the rest of the sentence. So they had not been playing cricket for two hours before the wind started. Or they hadn't been playing cricket for two hours before the wind started. And you want to change it to negative, I mean to, 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 to passive form, uh, the object of your active sentence becomes the subject of a passive sentence. And then had not been, uh, the same auxiliaries had not been, had not been. One more auxiliary is added being in main verb is changed to uh, past participle form. I mean, here is an ing form, but here it is changed to past participle form. And after that, by phrase, so the subject of your active sentence becomes the object of preposition by them, okay, for two hours before the word started. So cricket had not been or hadn't been being played by them for two hours before the rain started. This is how you change negative sentences from active to passive form and pass perfect, continuous, or progressive tense. Uh, interrogatives, or yes, no questions. In other words, you can say yes, no questions. Look at the first example. The only thing you need to do is just bring auxiliary had at the beginning of your sentence, and then subject, then been the second auxiliary, then main verb in ing form, then object, then rest of the sentence. It becomes yes, no question. So had she been teaching you for a year before 2020? Had she been teaching you for a year before 2020? I mean, mentioning the uh, time duration is very necessary with preposition for. If it's since, then mentioning the exact starting point of time in the past is necessary, like since last year, since 2002, 2000. That's very important. And now you want to change it. Look, I mean, almost the same structure. It's pretty easy. It's, it's not difficult. It's, it's pretty easy. Almost the same structure. See, had she been, had you been. See, the object of your active sentence became the subject of your passive sentence in almost the same structure. But after been, you add one more auxiliary being in passive form. And then you change the main verb to past participle third form, taught. So teaching in ing form, the main verb is in ing form here, but here it is in third form. And then by her, so the subject of your active sentence became the object of preposition by her a year 
before 2020 had you been being taught by her a year for a year sorry i've forgotten the preposition for here for a year before 2020 okay so now the short answer had she been teaching you for a year before 2000 yes she had no she hadn't and here the short answer uh, had you been being taught uh, by her for a year before 2020 yes i had no i hadn't okay or no i hadn't been i mean even that's possible so now look at this example had i been listening to you for a while before you left is it changeable? No, this sentence is not changeable from active to passive form. No change. Why? Uh, here's a point. Okay, see, we have had auxiliary and then subject I and then Ben and then main verb in ing form. But after main verb, uh, we don't have an object. I mean, it does not, this main verb does not take object directly. We cannot say, had I been listening you. Okay, there should be a preposition too. So as soon as you see a preposition between main verb and its object, I mean, in, in object, not its object, because it's object of preposition now. It's not the object of main verb. The main verb is intransitive. It doesn't need any object. So, therefore, this sentence is not changeable from active to passive form. If you see a preposition between object and main verb, you should know that that object is the object of preposition according to grammar. The main verb is intransitive. That does not need any object and that sentence is not changeable from active to passive form negative interrogatives we have complete form and we have short form over here so in complete form you bring the subject between had and not so had he not been singing songs since morning had he not been singing songs since morning and you want to change it to passive form uh, had songs not been being sung by him since morning this is how you do it look here i mean the subject of your active sense became the object of preposition by him and songs that was the object of your active sense it became the subject of a passive sentence okay and then singing the main verb in ing forum but it changed to third forum sing sang, sung okay and one more auxiliary is added before this main verb third form being okay if you want to use the short form you know just bring had not or hadn't and then subject and then rest of the sentence hadn't he been singing songs since morning hadn't songs been being sung by him since morning okay and i mean the short form is very common in daily spoken english information questions uh wh question word or information question word at the beginning then had auxiliary then subject then been and then main verb in ing forum then object in the rest of the sentence look at it how had afghanistan been defeating superpowers for centuries you want to change it to passive form obviously superpower is the object of this main verb defeating it becomes the subject of a passive sentence in afghanistan is the subject of your active sentence it becomes the object of preposition by afghanistan here main verb defeating is an ing form it is changed to past participle or third form and one more auxiliary being is added in active form you only need two auxiliaries had it been okay and the subject comes between these two auxiliaries but in passive form you need three auxiliaries had been in being okay in obviously again the subject comes between the first two auxiliaries had and been i hope this clear is I mean, this concept is clear. Okay, and now look at this example. Who had been governing Afghanistan for 20 years before Taliban? Who had been governing Afghanistan for 20 years before Taliban? So what you need, you need to bring the WH question word first. And then, uh, you know, uh, the two auxiliaries had been and then the main verb in ING form, then object and the rest of the sentence. So we have... I mean, object over here was Afghanistan, and it comes right after the main verb governing, and therefore we say it's object of this main verb. But we do not see any subject like he, she, you, we, they, or the name of a person. Why? Keep in mind that when there is no subject in your WH question word is who, it means that the word who itself functions as the subject of your sentence, as the subject of your WH question, okay? Why? Because the question is actually about the door of action. The question is about the subject, okay? So now, for example, if you want to answer this question, who had been governing Afghanistan for 20 years before Taliban, then you say Karzai and Ashraf Ghani, had been governing Afghanistan for 20 years before Taliban. So now Karzai and Ashraf Ghani, which is a compound subject, became the door of this action governing. And therefore, 
uh, the question was about the door of this action. So who itself functions here as the subject. Now there are two ways. The first way is somehow informal uh, when you use like, um, um, uh, I mean, the, the, the sentence or this kind of sentence in dorm, normal daily spoken English or maybe just normal informal written English, uh, you may use this first way. So who had Afghanistan been being governed by for 10 years before Taliban? Okay, if you take the preposition to the end of your, uh, you know, a passive sentence, or you, in other words, you just bring it after main verb here, it becomes somehow informal. But if you want to be more formal, and it's like kind of like, let's say formal writing, and you use this kind of sentence in, in formal writing, or it's a formal environment and you want to be formal so just bring the that I mean preposition by here at the beginning and change who the word who to whom by whom had Afghanistan been being governed for 20 years before Taliban so it becomes more formal I hope this concept is clear okay uh, one thing I want to mention at the end uh, I've already said this while explaining present perfect continuous tense from active to passive form that in written English is not a good idea. Most grammarians say that these tenses are not changeable from active to passive form in written English, in formal English, but in spoken English, it's okay in native speakers change sentences from active to passive form in perfect continuous tenses as well. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. And uh, if you want to uh, start this series of active and passive voice in all 12 tenses, please go to the playlist uh, active and passive voice. And there you will find all of these uh, 12 videos. Have a great time for now. And